Yo, check this out. This is the good guy, Stevie J. And you're rocking with hip hop since 1987. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. All right, it's your boy E Money, and I am here with, I think it's fair to say, one of the biggest reality TV stars in the game, my man Stevie J. Man, I'm how you doing? How's I'm everything right. going? I'm right, but you left out the legendary hitman producer there you over go. 90 there you go. Records sold for Grammys. But yeah, I'm a reality star too. There and a movie star. I got a new movie coming out. Oh, we definitely going to touch okay, on right, that. We right, definitely going right, to touch right, on right. that, man. Now, first and foremost, with the love and hip hop, man, okay. June 12th. Uh, June 2012, right. when it first premiered, right. fourth season in, right. congratulations, Thank man. You, congratulations for the success that you had. Um, did you ever think that the show would have the longevity that it's been able to uh, sustain? Uh, yeah. Okay. Basically, okay. you know, because, you know, when I came into the whole reality space, it was like Mona had a reader for love and hip hop atlanta and it was like i was out of the game for a minute mm -hmm. but i've been in the studio but i hadn't had any hits on the charts and i i had to think how can i be as creative in that television space mm -hmm. as i was in the music space so you know i wanted to be the first one to bring you know the two ladies to the screen okay okay you know what i'm saying because it's a real reality that yeah, most men yeah, yeah, we yeah, all yeah. go we all go through that and whether you want to admit that whether wife is looking at you go upside your head we all get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, like most men in general, you know, go through that. So I wanted to be the first man to put his motherfucking balls in the chopping block and say, yo, this is what it is. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, with that being said, I um I put it all on the table the first season. You know what I'm saying? And in the second season, I kind of moved toward where, where I, who I wanted to be with. Mm -hmm. The third season, I just stayed with who I wanted to be with. In the fourth season, I see I, I'm, I'm developing into, you know what I'm saying, a gentleman that I that I truly want to be and that I want the world to see. You the know good guy. The good guy. Okay. Now, with all that being said, so in the beginning, you did kind of foresee you uh, being the household name that you are, Stevie J. I mean, I just saw, I want to say that, I would just say that I saw myself just bringing something exciting Different. to television. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Now that platform, like you said, has created some some great blessings for you. Absolutely. Where um, you executive producing a movie coming yeah. out uh, that time of the month. Absolutely. Give us the story behind. It. I heard you got some some heavy hitters in the movie. Well, you know, I can't reveal too much, but I could definitely say that the movie is called That Time of the Month, and I'm I'm grateful and I'm and and I'm happy that they let me executive produce the project, co-direct the project, star in the project. You know what I'm saying? And and pretty much pick the cast. You know, we got some definitely some heavy hitters in the joint, and you know that time of the month is coming out in February, and we begin shooting next month. Um, and I'm just. I'm blessed to be a part of something great, you know what I'm saying? And, and my whole career, you know, all the things I prayed for have manifested from wanting to be on top of the charts. I held the one, two, and three down for 15 weeks with Diddy. Another producer did that. Like, um, you know, I was able to come and get a number one show for VH1, the biggest show VH1 has ever seen. Nobody else has did that. And I'm able to come and I know bring a movie to the table that will top the charts as well. All right, man. Listen, man, we looking forward to that. We I'm, looking forward I'm, to that. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited, man. All right, now, like you said, man, you kind of created um, a character that has yet to be or wasn't seen prior to you. Right. Now, fast forward. Right. Do you ever feel like watching Love & Hip Hop Atlanta and some of the other Love & Hip Hop series uh, that some of the male characters and even the female characters are doing their best Stevie J rendition? Well, you know, I'll just say that you know, Mona and I, we, we've developed a great relationship okay, and, okay. you know, and, you know, the, the love and hip hop, let me just say, my dad was like, how you feel about love and hip hop? I said, dad, I don't know, should should I leave the franchise since I'm doing my spin off and mm -hmm. doing movies? He's like, Michael Jordan should have never left the Bulls. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll just say that to say, you know, I've created the model so to say, for love and hip hop, and you know what I'm saying. I feel I feel blessed to have partners like Mona and Viacom and Stephen Springman and Stephanie Gale that can see what I do and, and wanted to flourish through the 
through the other love and hip hop hops, and you know what I'm saying. I'm here to stay. You know what I'm saying. I'm not going anywhere. And if, and if they could take something from this season, they could take this, and then they're gonna have to take something from the next season to take that, and just let the seed keep growing. You know what I'm saying. We're gonna water this thing. There you go. There you go. Now you spoke on something a second ago. Spinoffs. Okay. It's undeniable. Yeah. Like you said, you yeah. are the face of the love and hip hop brand. Yeah. yeah. When can we expect? Not is it happening? When can we expect that spinoff? Stevie, the Stevie J um, project is is due. To, to start shooting in less than 30 days. You okay. know what I'm saying? And you know, it's like we taking on LA. Okay. You know what All I'm right. saying? New endeavors. I'm working back with Bad Boy, you know what I'm saying? And Kanye has joined us. So, oh, yeah, we you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's going okay, down. Okay, okay. Now, before we move away from Love and Hip Hop, I okay. have to ask um, for your, your faithful viewers, such okay. as myself, okay. how scripted is the show? Because at times, it does seem. All right, I could tell you this much. Mm -hmm. From my perspective, none of none of my stuff is scripted, but it's still a format for television. Okay. That okay. that it's a storyline. So let's say something happens, right? Let's just say you know what I'm saying. Me and you walking down the street, you know what I'm saying, and, and they they want to see the, us going to the, all the way to the down the street to the mm -hmm. store and come mm -hmm. back. You have to complete the storyline, so they have to write in and complete storylines. Okay. Okay. So, but but the scenarios that we give them that's raw, they get that. You know what I'm saying, and then they have to polish it up to to okay. complete the storyline. You know what I'm saying? Okay, all right. But, but I'm but I'm I'm 100 percent authentic. Raw. There you go. You know what there you go. Now, on a more serious note, this season you right. have been dealing with you know some personal issues, right. um, substance abuse, right. things with the child support. Right. But um, first, let me ask, how is your health? Oh you man, know? I'm good, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm standing in the gym. I'm boxing now. It's been almost eight weeks. I'm boxing. I'm clean. You know what I'm saying? I I ain't smoked in a year. You know what I'm saying? No other drugs in like six months, seven months. You know, I feel great. You know, and um, this child support case, we're at the end of it. It should be finished by June 15th. I have the 8,000 pound gorilla off my back and I'll be able to flourish and be, you know, I'll be, be able to be more productive on every okay. angle in my life. You okay. know what I'm saying? It's a blessing. Now, it seems like you've taken definitely more of a, a role model sort of um, role, you know, uh, this season where you can kind of give other artists some insight on how to handle these issues with, with substance abuse because you know everybody feel like yeah. weed or whatever is yeah. you know it, but it can take over at whatever some point. whatever it is it's, it's the substance of it's the substance problem mm -hmm. like whether it's weed pills Molly, yeah. mollies cocaine whatever you know what i'm saying so me i look at it like i love where i am right now i'm back to the basics where it all began I, when i first started making beats at home as a young and i never used nothing and made some of the best music of my life and you know when we take those substances um you know it tends to make us feel like we're superman but we're really diminishing or taking away from what's truly there though you know what i'm saying the the, the, the organicness we're, we're we're coating it with something and, and it's not able to really flourish yeah. so you know my thing is now i'm taking the approach of i'm the guy that I was the party man. I was the motherfucking original rock star. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm bringing the pills. I'm bringing the coke. I'm bringing whatever the ladies want. I'm bringing that. But now, when I'm in the studio, I ain't doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody else is doing something, and my energy is still up. So what I would say is, I want to be the voice of reason to to show the the entertainment business that you ain't got to do that to 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 reach your peaks and goals. Mm -hmm. That's gonna really weigh you down in the long run. So. You know, I'm starting different programs for the industry right now. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what my focus is. Um, um, I really want to perfect people's energy. And You know what I'm saying? As I do mine, I'm not perfect, but I, as far as energy goes, if the cleaner we are, the, the better we, the, 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 the more that we can do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The more productive we are. You know okay. what I'm saying? So I'm starting programs for, the, for people in the industry, man. That's definitely what's up. Much needed and much appreciated. Yeah. All right, now, during the season, you were able to talk about some of your issues with uh, somebody that you were able to create some great music with, Miss Faith Evans. Oh, man, my um, sister. Yeah, now, you was talking about 90 million sold. And, yeah. You know, y'all have a history that goes all the way back to B.I.G. Yeah. Tell my us brother. a little bit about your relationship with Faith and, you know, get into some of the records because a lot of these yeah. young people, they don't know mm. how the biggies, yeah. big, some of my favorite, Victory. Yeah. Um, Notorious thugs, yeah. you know, that's Stevie J. Yeah. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know. <laughs> that's you know, the it's heat. Like, it's like when I when I first met Faith, um, mm. I hadn't I hadn't even met Puff yet. I was working with this producer by the name of Chad Elliott. 
and Chad um, was in the studio just doing some songs with Faith and I'm like, I was on the piano, she started singing, man, I'm talking about chills just started coming down my spine, my arms everywhere and we just became cool. She was like, Stevie J, you dope, you know what I'm saying? I can't wait till Puff Me Too and Biggie and everybody and so, you know, we just began to develop a relationship with her, um, even with her daughter China and I used to come to the crib and we used to just talk music, put it in the air and, and just, you know, it just became, you know, Biggie just coming in the studio every day, like opening the door, like what you got for me? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I remember right before we went to LA to do the Bone and Big song, you know what I'm saying? He was like, I got something for you. He rolled me a blunt, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Cause I, I, Big got me to smoking heavy. I wasn't even a heavy <laughs> smoker. Yeah, thanks Big, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? He rolled me a blunt and then had liquid hash in it. He was like, make the beat for Bone now. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and that's yeah. when I came up with the Bone and Big jump. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, Biggie was one of the, man, how can I put it? He, As a person, he was one of the most cool, understanding. Like, if you're having a bad day, this dude would make you feel great in a split second. You know what I'm saying? He had that type of personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember one time, <laughs> I had some chicks from Philly. You know what I'm saying? I met him at the, at the bus stop or whatever. I mean, at the train station mm -hmm. or whatever. And they called me, they was like, you remember us? We met us at the train station. We over here at um, um, Manhattan at the at the garden, at the, what is that, Madison Square yeah, Garden yeah. train station. I was like, I'm about to come get you. I came, scooped them, dropped them off to the studio. I was like, big, watch them. I'm about to go get the, I'm about to go get the Branson and go get the bottles, <laughs> boo, boo, boo. I come back, you know what I'm saying, big in the, in, in, in the booth when I'm getting topped off for, for interlude and all that. <laughs> he watched the wine. <laughs> Big could bag any chick. He could bag any chick. Any chick. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? Any That's chick. Crazy. Anyone. Anyone. You know what I'm saying? So he just was that dude, man. You know what I'm saying? And I believe if he was here, music would be a whole lot different, yeah. man. You know, it's a lot of fuckery going on yeah. and all that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, to each his own, but. I don't want my sons wearing spandex and, and all that and, 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 and running around doing crazy, you know what I'm saying, feminine moves and all that. A lot of goofy shit. Nah, we ain't with none of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, ain't, we, not, we not into that, huh, yeah, Stan? Right. <laughs> not into that. Right. So, but at the end of the day, we can't be calling that hip hop. We gotta right. find another name for that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you come from a different. Yeah, I come from the golden era. I come from the <laughs> the pox and the and the bigs and niggas smack you off the stage. You you know what I'm saying? Yeah, With yeah. all that. Yeah. So let's. What are we gonna call that? What are we going Let's let's find the name. In all seriousness, people at home, listen. Come on, guys. Let's take a poll on this. What are we gonna call this? This is not. What is what is hip hop and what's not hip hop? I like it. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's let's, let's head a poll on hip hop since 1987.com. Right. Stevie J born right here. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. So at the end of the day, I'm not standing up for 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 for, for half this shit. That's None of the it. Fool, yeah. I'm not fucking around with that. I'm not. That's why. I, oh, won't you work on this one? That I'm not working on none of that. Mm. I'm gonna work on something that's substantial and that and that's that has some real elements to it that 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 involve hip hop. Nice credible pride. Yeah, yeah credible yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Authentic, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But at the end of the day, man, that's why our generations the generation now, mm -hmm. not our generation, mm -hmm. the generation now is all fucked up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cuz you got all this fuckery and, and, and buffoonery yeah. running around here in the music industry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Stevie J's back, you know what I'm saying? Oh God, now, like Stiz is back, nah, you know what I'm saying? Right. Danger Zone, we here, you know what I'm yeah. saying? We, we coming for him. All right, we definitely gonna talk about some of the artists you got, you know, you, know, you got right. some Philly cats under your belt. That's right. Now on the, on the season, uh, the episode where you were talking with Faith, you yeah. talked about working with her. Right. Have you gotten to, yes. you got a chance to? Yes, we, we in the studio now, we working on her project called The King and I. It's a, it's a project with her and Big, you know okay. what I'm saying? Mm. Duet project with her and Big. And all I can say is, man, real music, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying, it, it, it ain't, it, I ain't got nothing against the trap, God blessing all the trap niggas and all that, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that's all love, but this is some real music, strings, bass, live guitars, pianos, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. harps, and you know what I'm saying, everything, organs, real beautiful music. Okay, now, I want to touch on something, but... A little while ago, I got to sit with Manny Fresh, okay. and he talked about the production aspect of the game and how he felt like guys like you and him right. kind of set these new producers right. up 
to be in a better position where they can charge money for beats. Right, right. To, to, and he just felt like they didn't take advantage of the position that you guys allowed them to be in. Well, what are your thoughts on the production game now and where producers are? My thoughts on the production game right now, you got you got like out of 40 cats, you got five cats that might be implementing music and the other is the no other, super producer. No, nah, no super producers. They all co copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. A lot of this, but ain't none of this, ain't none of this, ain't none of this, mm -hmm. ain't none of this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So what are you? Are you a beat maker or are you a producer? Me, I'm a producer, cause I'm a produce. I'm gonna start with the drums. I'm gonna lay the keys. I'm gonna lay the guitars. I'm gonna lay the bass. I'm gonna lay the strings. I'm gonna lay whatever elements, the flutes, and I'm gonna lay the vocals. And I'm gonna produce the vocals for whatever artist gets them. And I'm gonna arrange the track. And I'm gonna compose the shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What What is producing nowadays? Is it just I'm right? This, Open up Fruity Loops, let's take this and copy and paste that and paste that. That's not producing, guys. That's not producing. All right, since we're talking producing, I got plaques on my wall that say 20 million, 7 million, 10 million, 15 million. So what are they doing nowadays? Because they can't get 200,000. Facts. So it's no production really. Manny Fresh was a producer. He yeah. was sitting there and, until the track was right, producing from top to bottom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Vocals to the music to the vocals. You know what I'm saying? Take it back to the Teddy Rileys, man. To yeah, the Jimmy yeah. Jam, Terry Lewis, the Babyface of L.A., man. Yeah, yeah. Devontae Swing, man. Yeah. If, if, if those cats get in the room right now with these cats today, blow them out the, blow them out the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I like to say in production. But I'm back, guys. I hope you enjoyed your meals, cause I'm taking those fucking plates. There you go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Now I gotta talk on another another record that you produced in okay. the past, man. <sighs> that ride or die record, oh, man. We yeah. got we gotta talk All about right. that. A lot yeah, of that hip hop coming. enthusiasts they they tend to look at that at the beginning of the end yeah. of Mace's career. You being the hit man, being with Bad Boy. Yeah. But I was cool with that. Give us the whole story, I was cool man. with Jay. It was the, and it, a lot of people don't know that's your vocals. I'm yeah, rolling yeah, with Rockefeller. Yeah, that's me at the beginning. Yeah, that's yeah, me. Yeah. I'm rolling with Rockefeller, man. They got money. Yeah. But me and Jay, we was cool. Like, I see him, you know, I be shopping, you know what I'm saying, downtown and all that. Mm -hmm. And I see him, we bump into each other. And you know what I'm saying, and chop it up. He'd be like, yo, what kind of tracks you got? to have system turn the shit up. Boom. Oh, I want that. I want to write to that. Boom. And so it was a point where he was like, yo, I want this track. I was like, what you going to do with it? He was like, I just need that track. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he never let me in on what he, his whole thing was. What he was going to do, yeah. Because he know that's my man, and that's my man. Mace was my man, and Diddy's my man. So I remember after the song got finished, I was like, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I was like, fuck. I'm like, oh, shit. And here come Diddy in my session. Yo, what, what happened? What? I'm like, listen. All I know is that I got 60000 for the track, and, and the nigga took the track and did what he did. I ain't, I ain't hear it till you heard it. How you explain the intro, though? I just wanted to... That's my man. Jay's my man. So it's I was, it, was, it, was, it was Bad Boy Rockefeller. We, we all was one. Rough Rider, yeah. we all rock together. Yeah, yeah, you know, we yeah. all was on a tour together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I'm rolling with Rockefeller. They got money. Jay's my man. You know what I'm saying? He so took that in. He took that and was like... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, that's that's just a, that's just something I had to eat. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and Puff was mad at me for a second, and Mace was mad at me for a second, but at the end of the day, that was just a blind nigga hit me with the blind, blind seven, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Huh. I, mean, I had to wear that. You know yeah, what I'm mean? saying? Yeah. Okay. 60 bands and a lot of royalties later. <laughs> you know what yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was like, you know, I had to wear that. Nigga got me. Nigga, yeah, he, yeah. you know, got me with the blind seven. But, you know, it, it's all part of the game. You know what I'm saying? And as a youngin' in the game, that's one of those things I had to I had to eat. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, what's your relationship like with the two of them now? I know you back with the Hitman, but what's yeah. your relationship like with Hov? And well, well, I haven't talked to Hov in a minute. You know okay. what I'm saying? But um, I, I, I have talked to Jay Brown and I'm getting myself involved in that 
J and B project. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I have, it's no no ill feelings. Mm -hmm. And, you know what I'm saying? With Mace, I seen Mace, you know what I'm saying? I got Mace back to start rapping again. I went to his church and, you know what I'm saying? Got him out of them Steve Harvey suits and told him this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, that's my man. Mace, good folks. Yeah, folk, yeah that's me. my man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what's up, Pastor Mace? And that's my man. So, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm cool with everybody. I don't have a problem with nobody. I think my biggest problem was that, you know what I'm saying, I just was running around with the wrong people. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that's why I came back in the game with nothing but females. There you go. Hey. Can't lose. You know what I mean? Hey. hey. That's like the Russell Simmons uh, exactly. method. The Russell, Russell Simmons theory. Now, um, as far as you getting back with the Hitman, congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. Like you said, Kanye's in the Hitman yeah, now. Yeah. Who yeah. is in the Hitman? I mean, and what can we expect from the Hitman? Well, right now in the Hitman, we got Mario Winans, Chucky Thompson, Sean C. LV, um, Derek Angeletti, um, myself, and Kanye. From what I remember right now, if I miss anybody, forgive me. But that's all. That's what I remember right now. And did it. You know what I'm saying? Those are the hitmen right now. Okay. All right. Now, as far as the music you got coming, like I said earlier, man, you working with a. Uh, a cat loving hip hop. I mean, loving hip hop. Hip hop since 1987. Yeah. We always show love to. Right. My man Stiz. Yeah. What can we expect from uh, Philly Zone? What? Stiz, the music y'all got coming and everything. Well, you know, all I can say is, um, when I when I first decided to work with Stiz, I saw that he was independent, meaning that he will always be in the studio working, working, mm -hmm. working, working, and now you know what I'm saying. He's found his lane. You know what I'm saying, and we can expect. You know what I'm saying? Some solid, super solid hip hop. Not none of this coonery and buffoonery and all this, you know what I'm saying? None of that. Mm -hmm. Some solid hip hop. Mm -hmm. Something that big and, and pop could be in their grave like, thank God it's some real hip hop coming. You know what I'm saying? Some DJ Premier would be like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I want. I want people to, to see Stiz and know that he's raw hip hop talent. It's not it's not fake about it. He's a lyricist and he's a strong artist. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's all I can say. When well, can we talent. expect the project to drop? Or, or at well, least the first know, record? Well we we dropping we dropping we dropping joints now, you know, um freestyles and, and everything. But you know, we're gonna drop something, you know, mid summer. Mid summer we'll drop something. Okay. You know what I'm right. saying? All right. Well, make sure y'all drop it with us first. Absolutely. He already knows. Come Stiz on, already, already know. know. Shout out to Stiz. Yeah. Shout out to Jay. Know. Now I heard you've been doing some some records with some other people, the Justin Bieber's, the yeah. Taylor Swift's. Yeah. You know what? My, you know. My thing is like I'm working with you know back with with the Hitman and Diddy and you know what I'm saying and 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 they have a lot of projects where well, we have a lot of projects on the table and you know a lot of opportunities and I'm just grateful just to be back in the game on a high level, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I left on a high level and, you know, I'm just blessed to be back on a high level and, you know what I'm saying, Diddy's album is crazy, you know what I'm saying? Diddy's album is bananas, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Bananas, when I say hip hop at yeah. its finest, yeah. hip hop at its finest, you know what I'm saying? So we got that project, we got, you know, the Cassie project, mm -hmm. we got, you know, um, the J&B project, you know, the Taylor Swift, the Justin Bieber's, the Ariana Grande's. You know what I'm saying? We're just working, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm blessed, man. Right. Real music. There you go. No, we done touched on a lot of things, yeah, man. Yeah, that yeah. pulse. But, uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything you'd like to leave us with before we get out of here? Yeah, man. The movie. That time of the month. Yes. You know, we're about to start filming that. And it'll be ready for release about February, around Valentine's Day, you know what I'm saying, you'll get yourself a good laugh, you know what I'm saying, I, I think I'm like, like the new Martin Mike, you know what I'm saying, so, you know what I'm saying, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna bring it to you real funny, but I ain't putting on no dresses or nothing, but, you know what I'm saying, we're gonna keep it funny, and we're gonna keep y'all happy, and we're gonna keep y'all hearts warm at home, man, you know what I'm saying, Stevie J is back, man, as a solid producer, look out for Stiz, you know what I'm saying, and, um, you know, we ain't going nowhere, man. We here. Oh, the spinoff is coming. The Jordans take LA. Man. Mm. Look, man. Enough yeah. playing yeah. around yeah. for y'all, right? <laughs> All you producers that's over there toying around, doinking around on y'all Fruity Loops. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nothing against Fruity Loops. I happen to like one or two of the sounds, but it's a wrap, guys. Just go ahead and pack it up and go on to the crib. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you learn how to compose, you know what I'm saying, to produce and play some instruments on them tracks, 
You know what I'm saying? The world would be better for you. Hip hop since 1987.com. You already oh, know. Baby. It's your boy E Money. Danger Zone, that. baby. E Money, baby. You already know. J Money, What's baby. baby Stairs, baby. Know. West, baby. <laughs> Big Snow in here. We here, man. Signing out. Signing out. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. I can relate to my character in some ways, you know, with the ladies. That's me. That's, that's, that's not hard, of course. You know. I'm gonna touch on that, man, because you, you you got a lot of guys jealous with you. Very with the jealous. ladies, man, you and Naomi Campbell, Grace Camello on the show. You gotta thank Lee Daniels for that one. Lee hey, I'm not thanking him. I'm one of the haters, you know what I mean? <laughs>